Hello everyone, my name is uh, Simone Arena. I am a technical marketing engineer in the Enterprise Architecture team. And today in this video, I want to give you a quick overview of a geo-distributed redundancy solution for the Cisco wireless LAN controller across two data centers running Cisco ACI technology. Why this demo? Well, as you know, Wi-Fi is becoming more and more business critical for our customers who have been adopting the controller stateful switchover SSO feature to basically minimize service downtime upon a controller failure. Now, in a typical deployment, the controller is deployed centrally in the network and often in the data center. And customers are looking into ways of implementing redundancy across geo-distributed locations. Now, ACI is the emerging technology for data centers, so we wanted to test how SSO works across sites using ACI. The, the documentation and the setup for this demo has been put together with the great help from the Steam colleagues that are mentioned here in the slide, and the demo is available at the CPOC location in London. So before we start, a quick disclaimer. Uh, the material that I'm presenting in this demo is a result of a proof of concept. It's not intended to be considered a Cisco validated design because this requires much more in, in extensive test, a, a formal procedure. Okay, so let me quick, uh, quickly start from introducing the SSO stateful switchover feature for the wireless line controller. This is the only redundancy solution today available in the market that provides a zero downtime or close to zero downtime for your network upon a controller failure because basically you have a box-to-box -box redundancy and active and standby standby is continuously monitor the status of the active and if a failure happens the standby takes over and for the rest of the network APs and clients nothing happens okay so your your application will continue running now um, as of today, SSO to be implemented requires either a direct link between the RP ports, the redundancy port on the controllers, either a direct link or a dedicated switch layer two uh, connection between the boxes. So what happens if you have a secondary, second, secondary data center and you want to leverage the geo-distributed redundancy to augment your HA solution. So what you can do is to move physically the second, data, uh, the second controller in your second data center. But for SSO to work across a layer 3 network, since we require a layer 2 connection, it means that you need somehow to extend the connectivity between the two data center a layer two for the RP port and for all the other VLANs because when the secondary or standby takes over it's an exact copy of the active. So we want to do an extension of the layer two domains across two data centers but we wanted to do it effectively because when you extend the layer 2 domain, you have to basically handle a lot of protocols, spanning tree, ARPS, HSRP, other layer 2 or layer uh, 3 broadcast and multicast. So how can I do this effectively? There are multiple technologies that allow this, especially if you are talking about connecting two data centers, for example, OTV or VXLAN, and, and we will leverage those, but we will also leverage the features that ACI has to stretch a subnet across 
a, an ACI and across two different ACIs in two different data centers. So here is the high level overview of the setup for this demo. You, we are simulating a data center one where we have fabric one and a data center two with a separate fabric, ACI fabric. Uh, the two are connected with, uh, could be different technologies, uh, data, data center interconnect technologies like uh, VXLAN LTD. In this case, it's a direct link with VPC to keep it simple. So basically what we have here is that the primary controller is connected through a um, lag port VPC on, on the infrastructure side um, on Fabric 1, while the secondary data center is connected to Fabric 2. And then we have an access point somewhere in the campus network and multiple clients connected. So we want to show how we are able to bring up the SSO pair across to data center. And this requires a layer two connectivity. So let me go a little bit deeper in what we have done. So basically I have, what I have to extend are multiple of this VLANs and we are gonna use a, a simple one-to-one -to -map, one -one mapping between the VLAN, so the subnet that we want to extend the, a bridge group domain, so a layer two domain, and a, an endpoint group, so an EPG in ACI technology. So here it goes, we have the first one that we have to create is an EPG for extending their P port connectivity, because the two controllers to, to form an SSO pair, they need to talk through their P port to, to sync all the configuration and to monitor the state on the other side. Another fundamental connectivity is the management interface. So we created another uh, EPG for the management VLAN where we have the active controller with the, uh, the primary management interface and the uh, redundancy management interface. The secondary controller, the standby, will have uh, active a secondary management interface, redundancy management interface. The third VLAN that we extended through the fabrics is the Wi-Fi client. Okay, so with this setup, the, the access point will connect, meaning will register to the controller, will form the CAPOAC tunnel. So from anywhere in the, in the campus, we're gonna reach the active controller. And if I have a client, this client, connected to the access point will get an IP address from the Wi-Fi client subnets 10.26/24. Okay? So at this point what we what we want to show you is that we will fail the active controller and what happens is since there is this communication between the two ACI fabrics the standby will take over and uh, will assume the role of active. Now all the IP addresses that were on the other side become active on this side from the access point point of view. Nothing has changed, still talking to the same management interface. Same thing for, for the client. He will keep his IP address and will be happily connected. So one thing is to show you on the slides Next thing is to show you with a, a, a real um, live demo. So let me quickly get to it. Okay, we are now ready to show you a live demo. Uh, let me start by showing you the configuration on the controller. So here I'm connected to controller one. This is the active and primary controller. You can see from, uh, the IP address on the management interface, 1181 is the VLAN, the IP address is 201. The redundancy management interface is 202. So let me also show you the redundancy configuration. So here you, you can see that 
10.1.4.2.0.4 is the uh, peer uh, redundancy management interface of controller 2, which is situated in uh, data center 2. And uh, let me show you that from a redundancy perspective, everything is working across the two data centers because as you can see here my uh, primary controller is active and the peer uh, they are communicating and is uh, in standby hot and the uh, uh, sync update happened and is completed also I can show you some uh, statistics like this were introduced in 8.0 so here you can monitor um, all the communication, you can see the network latency, the gateway reachability, and the config uh, sync counter, everything is happy. From a client perspective, I have one client connected uh, 10.2.6.2.1.1, and I'm using this uh, to, um, to actually do a, a live switchover and, and show you the switchover is happening, uh, across uh, the two data centers. So in order to do that, let me start. I have already started a ping. Let me uh, just to show you that this is a, a live thing. So I'm pinging um, the uh, IP address of the client 10.2.6.2.1.1. Okay, now I'm connecting, I'm going to the controller. So show redundancy summary just to show you this is actually the active controller local state active and here i have my standby which is in show redundancy uh, summary as you can see the local state here is standby hot okay so in order to trigger a uh, switch over the easiest thing is to do it m manually to the command through the command redundancy force switch over so it will ask me are you sure you want to do this but actually let me show you before i i do this uh let me show you also from a fabric point of view that the the controller how the, is the fabric seeing the controller and the client so if i can uh, connect to the um to the controller of aci in data center one uh, which is at the IP address 138.215, I can see here uh, that in the EPG where I have the controller, that 201 and 202 that you remember are the interfaces uh, from the, ma the management interfaces in uh, for the active and primary controller, I can see this through uh, the VPC. So they are learned th uh, by the fabric through the VPC, which is the ether channel that locally connect the active controller to the data center one while 204 which is the rmi so the redundancy management interface of the standby controller is learned through the dci so the data center interconnect because it's connected to the other data center also same um same data center different epg I'm showing you that the client is uh, learned through the uh, same VPC that is connecting locally to the controller one. Now, if I go to the other controller for the other ACI in the other data center, I see the symmetric information, meaning that uh, 204, which is locally connected because it's a, a RMI of the standby, is actually connected through the VPC while 201 and 202 that are in the other data center are learned through the DCI interconnect. Perfect. Last thing that I want to verify is the client. So the client is in another EPG and is learned through the DCI as expected. So we are now ready to do uh, the switch over. So let me uh, see the, uh, the client is still, still pinging. So now I'm going to to the controller and trigger the switch over so you can see from the standby that uh, switch over happened and as you can see I didn't even lose one ping so great they um, 
the switchover has happened through the fabric. Now, uh, how can I verify from a fabric point of view? I can see uh, it takes a little bit to to uh, to upgrade, but basically, see now it's. Uh, I can see that in data center 2, I now see 201, which is the, the management interface that took over on the standby that is now active. And it, I can I have learned this through the VPC because now it's directly connected to uh, to the uh, con to the data center to the data center 2. And I can also see that now the client has been updated. And now the client is learned through the VPC, so it's learned through the uh, controller 2 in data center 2. So this demonstrates that the switchover uh, happened through uh, two data center with ACI. It's a stateful switchover. We didn't lose uh, the ping, so everything is good. All right, so to close this up, let me provide you with some additional information if you want to know more first of all here are the uh, releases of software we have used for both ACI and controller software if you want to know more about SSO I suggest you look at this guide and same thing for uh, ACI if uh, you want to know more um, about how the CPOC uh, implementation of ACI has been done uh, there is a great video from my colleague uh, Chris that goes through this. And with this, I want to thank you for watching.